but before that became too distant, I really wanted to um, say a few words that came to me from people who didn't really want to um, appear on the Zoom chat. It's just not their thing. Um, these two people are New Zealand passionate supporters of Julian Assange, Speak Up for Assange, and Nikki Hager, um, our New Zealand investigative journalist who exposed John Key um, and also was rather badly harassed by the New Zealand government, frankly, and paid out quite a compensation by the police for um, un un unlawful searches, confiscations of his journalistic materials. Um, and so anyway, um, Nikki Hager is really a, a sort of um, um, a dissenter and a, a really special voice in New Zealand and you couldn't get more of a contrasting person than the other person I'm going to read out a message from um, but I really hold him in high regard too. He's just been demonetized on YouTube. Um, he's um, got an awful lot of stories right and I know a lot of people would call him a conspiracy theorist but we know how many turned out to be true um, often revealed through real data and WikiLeaks. Um, um, but yeah, his name is Ed, and that's all we know him by. He's in on. That's why he doesn't like appearing on uh, on streams. But he does do regular regular broadcasts, and he's now lost all his earnings. Um, he has been reporting on COVID and calling out WHO and misinformation on COVID actually from the very beginning, way before anyone was taking it seriously. And um, I think it's appalling that he's been effectively censored and his, he can't post on his channel anymore. So those are the two people that I wanted to read out a statement. It's, it's from. quite a long piece by Ed and I'm sure he was going to make a video for us, um, but he said I'd be better at reading out, of course. Um, <clears throat> So as I said, Ed was from Outer Light Channel, Outer Dark Channel and Esoteric Detective, which are three completely different channels, which um, are really, really um, worthy of, you know, being kept alive on YouTube, I believe, and have called out a lot of, of truth, particularly related to WikiLeaks. World Press Freedom Day. What is it really? A funeral? Flowers on an old once worshipped grave? In today's upside down world, freedom of the press, we are told, is more important than ever. We are told this by lauded world leaders like Hillary Clinton. Clinton, who spoke in support of 2012 World Press Freedom Day, calling for the release of all foreign journalists imprisoned and persecuted, speaking right into the camera, looking right into the viewer's eyes. Of course, we can hardly disagree with that. But Clinton would later also make another call for action. This one was different. This call was for asking if it was possible for the United States to drone strike the publisher and journalist, Julian Assange. For what crime, you ask? Well, being a publisher with a dissenting voice. Julian Assange, who to this day still sits in Belmarsh prison for crimes so Casca-esque that no one can understand them except perhaps the tea leaf reading leadership of the United Kingdom. Although it would seem the leadership also don't understand the irony when they also support World Press Freedom Day year after year after year. The irony is so potent you could literally bottle it. The fact is beyond the theatre, freedom of the press has largely been abandoned in recent times, but that does not mean we should not ask for it to be fully restored. Just like little Oliver Twist, we should ask for more and more and more. But in doing so, we should also be aware of the saddest truth that we're trying to fill our tummies with gruel when the vast majority of us are on the verge of starving. For true freedom of the press is a grand trophy and no doubt worth striving for, but for the vast majority of the public at this moment, they don't even have the right to access information. So what use is a publisher or a journalist if that publisher or journalist cannot be accessed? Like a warehouse full of information that has a padlock placed on it. This is the major problem right now in our world. And just like an approaching darkness, access to information is growing dimmer by the day. Susan Wojcicki, for instance, the CEO of YouTube, recently said she would remove content that didn't come from authoritative news sources. She also went on to say that anything that contradicts the World Health Organization will be removed. The World Health Organization, by the way, who said in January that there was no sign of human to human transfer in regarding a pandemic that a few months later now has 5 billion in effective quarantine. The World Health Organization that recommended keeping travel open in the center of the outbreak. <clears throat> the World Health Organization that at this time does not recommend wearing face masks for the general public. 
If I tell my friends to wear a face mask as the prestigious Lancet Medical Journal recommends, does that make me a dissenter? Does this make me a subversive? Should I be deleted from YouTube, Google, which controls billions of minds because I say something that's not the doctrine of the World Health Organization? Which authority am I allowed to talk about in this authority labyrinth? <clears throat> Another example <clears throat> is the recent reports by Mark Zuckerberg's company, Facebook, which was complicit in censorship in Vietnam of independent news sources. Only government news sources could be accessed by the citizens of Vietnam on Facebook, and Facebook helped gladly facilitate this. Are these examples not classical cases of authoritarianism? These are just a few examples of many, and day by day by day, we hand in more and more power to those centralized control that we never elected over the bandwidth of information. And day by day, these same unelected people seek to reconstruct the idea of what not only freedom of the press is, but also freedom of access to information. They're slowly changing the idea of speaking truth to the power, to the idea of solely speaking only what the powerful deem is truthful. What kind of world would the future look like? It seems like we're going back to the Middle Ages, to the time of the kings and queens, of the serfs that they ruled over. We never elected these people and yet they control us. And now with their new narrative, they tell us we can still sing all we like as long as we sing praise for the Sheriff of Nottingham. They restrict information every day, they reformulate it. And perhaps the most frightening is in doing so, they're not only shaping laws in their own countries, but also in the hearts and minds of future generations. What will the future look like where children living in an environment are taught that the authority can always delete their posts or control their language, read their personal writings, and the only news they see is from authoritative news sources? What kinds of minds will be developed and graduate from that artificial school? What will they be like? What lens will they see the world with? Is the idea of privacy of thoughts or personal diary under your pillow now some silly old fashioned idea? What else will turn to vapor? And while we speak of freedom of the press, let's not us speak without saying the press has blood on its hand. They lament press freedoms at the same time they take them away from others. The most heralded news organization, Susan Washiki's authoritarian sources, the Washington Post, New York Times, BBC, etc., called daily for more censorship. Of course, not for them, but for others. They say conspiracy theorists, independent news services must be removed from the human thought. Was Russiagate, which was projected by these same sources, the Washington Post, New York Times, BBC, etc., at every turn not a conspiracy theory that turned out to be false? What is a conspiracy theory? Is it not just a group of people working towards a set outcome? Is that not just human nature? To think about them, does that make someone a demon now? To write about them, does that make someone a heretic? Are they the new witches? Can the priests of the new world see into their dreams, their crimes and decipher them before a court? Who gives anyone the right to tell another they do not have the same right to do the same? Are we living in the age of the scarlet letter? Will Julian Assange be released from prison? Will he be allowed to go home? The issue of a free flow of information anti-censorship is greater than press freedoms. Information is the very thread that weaves our society together. Without it, our society changes into a world with less color, less innovation, and expression, less freedom, but also less understanding of what makes us human, id. So that was quite a long um, statement he gave, but I, I, I did really like it and I appreciate it because many stories that um, he has reported have actually turned out right. And, and what he has always done for us is promote our protests in New Zealand. And he's probably one of the biggest political show YouTubers that there is. Um, it's not just politics, but yeah, it's one of his interests. So. Nikki Hager, New Zealand's top investigative journalist, worked with WikiLeaks and also helped Serena Tarani from Switzerland, um, who you've just seen, helped instigate the Speak um, Up for Assange statement from Julian, um, signed by 1,500 of the world's best journalists, including Chris Hedges, John Pilger, Daniel Ellsberg, Noam Chomsky. Um, and um, we already read it out, as I said. And this is what he said. I send these words to add my voice to the people around the world supporting Julian Assange in his time of great danger. Julian is in the news at the moment because of his ongoing abuses of his human rights, but I want to acknowledge him as history will remember him. One of the genuinely important people of our era. He's had a major impact on world politics since he dreamed up the idea of WikiLeaks 14 years ago. 
through force of personality, intelligence and hard work, he made WikiLeaks into something that could change the world. He's a great innovator who tried to answer the question of how publics around the world could be informed about the actions of the powerful in an era of increasing secrecy. The great whistleblowers of our times are, I believe, in part following his footsteps. At the moment, he is facing punishment precisely because of some of his most important achievements. The huge leaks on Afghanistan and Iraq wars and the State Department cables. Powerful forces are at work against him. He badly needs people to stick up for him. Part of the retaliation against him has been blackening his name. But Mandela was once denigrated as a terrorist. Daniel Ellsberg of the Pentagon Papers had his personal life attacked. But history remembers them well. And I believe the same will be the case with Julian. I look forward to the day when he's a much respected elder, invited to speak at human rights conferences. But for now, he's under attack and he needs and greatly deserves our support. So, yeah, I just thought that those were two very contrasting pictures of um, the scenario that we're um, all in at the moment. 